ES Audio. Hi, I'm John Weeks, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, how to bring Elvis to life using visual effects. But first, a visually impaired university student and entrepreneur is bringing the classic white cane into the 21st century. The fact is, you know, nobody really uses it today. You know, and I know why, because I felt vulnerable, excluded and stereotyped when using it. 19-year-old Ramnik Kaur Alawalia, who's CEO of My Vision, has created a high-tech cane for the modern world. It helps visually impaired people navigate their surroundings using AI, LiDAR and GPS technology. And Ramnik explains how it can notify users in different ways. The way that it could output would be dependent on what the user wants. So, for example, somebody might want audio, you know, take a left, take a right, or it could be like haptic feedback to show, okay, you know, move to the right, move to the left, maybe there's an obstacle in their way. So it was really, really up to the user and what they prefer. She's just won £10,000 for her device at the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow National Technology Competition and told us what the next steps are for her device. Make this a fully working product and have the first prototype ready very soon and to really try and get this as fast as possible to users so that we can get their feedback and my vision will grow with their vision and hopefully become our vision. (laughs) The government's official advisors on climate change say we're currently not on track to reach net zero emissions by 2050. The Climate Change Committee has called for improved policies on energy efficiency and land use and said there's still an urgent need to cut demand for fossil fuels. The CCC said there's a shocking lack of policy around getting better insulation into homes. And its latest report said if previous policies on insulation hadn't been scrapped, households would be saving £40 a year on bills. It recommended the government should focus more energy on promoting low-carbon consumer choices like flying less and eating less meat. A fashion blogger who tested positive for monkeypox has been revealing his symptoms online. Maxim Sapoznikov has shared videos on his Instagram showing the sores he has and explaining how he has a fever and feels tired. He said following the positive results, he felt scared after googling images of people with the condition. Maxim said the public health messaging around the monkeypox outbreak has been poor. A member of the VFX team who worked on the new Elvis movie has been telling us how they created some of the scenes. David Crawford, VFX supervisor from Moving Picture Company, explained how they put together the scenes of Elvis's Las Vegas shows. He told us they used a mix of real-life shots and CGI to create the final look. So they'll build a stage for where Elvis is performing, and then they'll put people close to the stage, and then they'll have nobody in the kind of blue screen area, and then we add the whole CG environment and then all the crowds in that area. And he said a lot of research went into how people would have danced and moved at an Elvis concert. You assume, okay, well, it's just going to be the girls that are going to be screaming for Elvis. But that's not at all what happened. In reality, it's the boys and the girls that were screaming for Elvis during all the various concerts that he had. So we had to do all that research and constantly ask ourselves, okay, if you're watching this show, what would your reaction be? Social media companies are being urged to crack down on car insurance scammers. Consumer group Witch said ghost brokers, scammers who doctor insurance documents to make them look real, mainly operate on social media. It found more than half the profiles offering cheap car insurance on Instagram showed no signs of being authorized by the Financial Conduct Authority. In response, Insta owner Meta said it doesn't allow fraudulent activity on its platforms and has removed the flagged accounts for violating its policies. Let's go to the ads now. Coming next, How Angry Birds is going multiplayer. Why not hit follow and rate in the meantime? Welcome back. A futuristic arcade in London has just secured the first multiplayer version of Angry Birds. The unique thing here is that we've got two slingshots, so you're working together as a team to take down the piggies for the first time ever in in Angry Birds history. That's Noah Geelan from Electric Gamebox in London, who've worked on the new team-based game, which uses cameras, touchscreens and sensors 
to offer a different kind of gaming experience. He explained how the tech they use for the game works. The funny looking visors that the players wear are effectively picked up by four tracking cameras in the corner of the room. So each player has a unique constellation on the top of their visor. So the game knows where they are at all times. Noah said the 3D motion tracking means the system knows when you jump, duck and move side to side. It looks like a highly antibiotic-resistant strain of the superbug MRSA, which has emerged in livestock over the last 50 years, can jump to humans. A study suggests the strains become the dominant type of MRSA in European livestock, and researchers say it's also a growing cause of human infections. The study found it maintained its antibiotic resistance over decades in pigs and other livestock, making it much harder to treat than other bacterial infections. The World Health Organization now considers it one of the world's greatest threats to human health. And finally, there's a way to show off your top artists on Spotify without waiting for the annual Spotify Wrapped. A website is now offering a free tool that turns your top artists into an iceberg graphic. Of course, it's called Icebergify and uses your top 50 artists and your long, short and medium term listening trends to create the graphic. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for The Leader Podcast for the latest news and analysis from the Evening Standard in London. We'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.